Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the host organization, Manipur Science and Technology Council, Master Infal, I extend my heartiest and warm welcome to all the participants of today's Vigyan Rusev, organized as a part of Azadi Kamrit Mahasab for August 2022. As you know, Vigyan Rusev is a year-long program organized by the Department of Science and Technology Government of India under one month, one theme basis since September 2021. The theme for last Month of Vigyan Usab, that is August 2022, is intellectual property rights. And for today's Vigyan Usab, we have five key speakers from different institutions, including one from Mastek, and they will be delivering presentations on different topics related to this month's theme. So I welcome all our steam speakers also. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I now take the privilege to invite our first speaker, Dr. R. K. Pritamjit Singh, Scientific Officer, Manipur Science and Technology Council, and he is also in charge of Patent Information Center, Mastek. He will be presenting. Uh, he will give a presentation on IPR activities of Patent Information Center, Mastek. So I invite Dr. R. K. Pritamjit Singh. Uh, thank you, uh, my colleague, Sri Seth Sharath, scientific officer, and uh, who is the program coordinator of this began shop. And and a very good morning to all of, all the participants once again. And I, on behalf of Manipur Science and Technology Council, once again would like to welcome all the key speakers of today's program. Uh, Sir Professor C H Bol Singh uh, of Manipur Institute of <coughs> Management Studies, Kanchipur. Sri T H Baite, Deputy Director, MSME DI Infa, and then Madam N Mina, Assistant Professor, Royal Academy of Law Oinam, and Madam M Chitra Devi, the Registered Patent Agent uh, of this in the state, and officials from DST Government of India, State Science and Technology Councils of different states, CDEC, and other their part uh, their participants from different academic institutions and organizations. Actually, today, uh, let me share my presentation. Uh, we have uh, this uh, Patent Information Center in the Manipur Science and Technology Council. Uh, then we have some activities. So regarding on that activity, especially in the state, what we have done so far, uh, let me share my, uh, my uh, slide. My slide is visible. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please carry okay. on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Patent Information Center Manipur was established in Manipur Science and Technology Council, Mastek. Uh, in the year 2008, it is transferred from Manipur uh, Government Department Science and Technology. And then it has been uh, started fully in the, um, in the council from 2010 itself. It is a center supported by the Department of Science and Technology uh, <coughs> under the supervision of Patent Facilitation Center, Technology Information for Casting and Assessment Council, Taikwa. And then the key objectives of the center is to create awareness about different forms of intellectual property rights, especially patents, designs, trademark, geographical indications, copyrights, etc., uh, to the students, researchers, and government departments, SMEs of the state, and then uh, to and, and also to facilitate them in search and filing of their IPs. And the main activities so far uh, we have executed is mainly uh, by one uh, scientific officer, that is myself, and then our one uh, junior research fellow here, project staff is here under the supervision of our director, uh, Master. And then <coughs> we have organized. Uh, workshops, awareness program, lectures on different themes uh, specific to different uh, target groups of the state. And so far, uh, other than also uh, our official team have visited uh, other centers, that is uh, some other IPR related programs organized by different uh, departments of the state to share our knowledge uh, related to IP. So far, uh, IPR facilitated by PIC Manipur is 
patent filing received from uh, different individuals, academic institutions, and then IT institutions and uh, other innovators. We have received around 75 applications, out of which we have filed uh, nine applications. It is mainly through, uh, normally we used to file the application through Park. if it is from the academic institutions and other, other individuals or innovators or who are interested uh, to go for a very quick registration, then we go for uh, a registration to request to our one patent farm, which is located in uh, uh, Kolkata, that is Majumdar and Majumdar. So, <clears throat> out of these nine filed applications, we so far we have granted four applications, and then about uh, other other IP that that is industrial uh, design registered so far is four registered, and then about trademark. This is mainly from the SMEs and the entrepreneurs of the state who have so far registered around 25 applica applications and technology transfer, IP licensing, we have done one. Uh, and then IP organized, awareness program so far we organized is around 45 in different uh, places of the state, in academic institutions, in uh, SME sectors, in melas, in uh, say, um, uh, exhibitions. So, and then one special, uh, another program is uh, PIC is IPSF, that is in the academy institutions mainly. So far, we have opened four IP, <coughs> IPSFs in the state. Uh, granted patents, about the patents, we have granted, uh, this is one uh, panel operated rice mill, this is rice fuller. This is in the years, in long back, even before coming to our council, that is, this is the first uh, this uh, patent of the, of the council. It is a pedal operated cooler or rice husker to bring out an overall improvement, replacing the traditional devices of petty dehusking or pounding. And then second one is a novel method of separation and isolation of indirubin from uh, cum leaves. Uh, this is from the Manipur University. Uh, we have uh, forwarded it to Taipak and then uh, inventors are uh, Professor Raz Mohan and one of his uh, research scholar, W. Suzata Devi. And uh, that was granted in the year 2019. <clears throat> and then, uh, let me sum up. Uh, the next one is an, an improved dry fish fermentation compressed apparatus and method thereof. This is also from our council <coughs> output. Uh, this uh, inventors are Mr. Surendana, Mr. and one project staff, Dina. That was in 2020. We received the <coughs> grant. And this is the... <coughs> Improvement of the compression of this our local ngari. That is normally we use a traditional one that was not much hygienic, so it is more hygienic. And then uh, so so uh, and short period of time also we so something like this. Some claims are there. So this is this one is the second, third one. And then another one is from this is also from the council. This is tricycle tracing machine. Mr. Surendranath and one Mr. Sarad that our program coordinator himself. Uh, we received the <coughs> grant uh, that is granted in the year 2021. It's a tricycle credit pressure. It's an innovation in credit tracing. The pressure is operated manually just like driving a tricycle rickshaw. So it's a very simple one and so that one can use it very portably. <coughs> uh, another, some uh, others are in the other process are hair dye composition and a process of the preparation of the same. This is also from the Manipur University by Mr. Warjit and then Suzata. It is also from the Kum, Kum plant. So it is under uh, publication of the patent journal. It has been published in the patent journal. Another one is a percussion instrument. This is a Manipur Mridanga that we use in normally our ceremonial programs. Uh, it is a traditional Mridanga consists of a wooden body, uh, metal work, uh, big Three such as mango tree, jackfruit, and wang tree, etc. So it's a replacement type of thing that uh, we use in the traditional type. Uh, it, uh, <coughs> the improved Manipur Miranga is an unbreakable, strong enough, and it is environment friendly since its body is made up of bamboo reinforced polymer. Another one is uh, uh, this Dolo. This is also from the council. And then uh, same technology, more or less, with the manipulative mridanga. It says we use here uh, chicken wire mesh fiber reinforced polymer to increase its durability and to lower cost also. 
and another one is from NIT Manipur. Uh, this is Bono Harbor formulation in the treatment of uh, broader aspects of metabolic syndrome. Uh, this is uh, inventors are uh, uh, Suzata and then Subhas Chandra Mandal, Mahapatra Pradeep Kumar Sinha. Uh, it is also already published in the patent journal. And then another one from NIT again. This is from novel user friendly design and hydrolysis process of volatiles. It is the inventor is uh, Sujata alone this time, and then we have already submitted this one also to Taipa, Government of India. And this is all about the patent. So far, we have done, and then this is a design registration that we have uh, registered through PIC. This is a biomass grinder that was in 2017 is registered. Uh, that design holder is one Albert Jamal, uh, and then second one, the same. Uh, this uh, design holder is the same. Uh, this uh, uh, brigade molder also, Albert German himself, and then registered in the year 2018. And then this uh, <clears throat> another one is a cooking stove that was also registered in 2018 by Albert Jamal. Jamlan. It's a multi fuel stove made of MS seat with a cylindrical brigade. And then the third one is Kangli Park bed. <clears throat> Uh, the design holder is Santi. Uh, it is under process. Uh, it's not granted till that. Uh, <clears throat> so it is. Uh, it, uh, it seems uh, some colors are there. That seven colors that uh, <clears throat> that our uh, seven clans or it is that is uh, it, it is depicting the colors in Sharma. So it's a ceremonial base made of dry used cocoon. Uh, <clears throat> all the this uh, round shapes are used cocoons only. He designed, she designed like this, and then it is under And then about the registered trademarks, we have received so many applications from our uh, local uh, SMEs, uh, entrepreneurs, and then startups also. And these are the, some of the, uh, the trademarks that so far registered. It's mainly uh, the packaged drinking water, it is under class 32, and then uh, spices, and then here oil. And then this uh, service mark LYS also, and then <clears throat> here shampoo, and then spice once again, and then a service uh, this sanu also here, and then the machang. Let me let me sum up. These are the things that we have uh, registered so far or from our local entrepreneurs. <clears throat> And then these are the registered GIs of Manipur. Uh, so far, the uh, Department of uh, Industry and then Department of Horticulture has uh, applied for registration of GI. And then uh, we have uh, the state has uh, already registered seven GIs products. And then uh, out of the this seven, three are from the industry that is handloom sector. And handloom handicraft sector that is Safi Lanfi, GI number 371, and then Moirang Fijin, GI number 373, and then Wang Kai Fi, GI number 372, and then uh, initiative from the Department of Horticulture is uh, Kachai Lemon, GI number 466, Tamilong Orange, GI number 590, and then Sira Kong or Hatri Sili, GI number 592, and then one uh, initiative by the Nera Mek. Uh, that is one uh, uh, how that is black scented rice. Uh, GI number is 602. And then IPSL we have, uh, as I have already mentioned also, uh, <coughs> our uh, this PIC has a provision to open the IPS sales in different uh, academy institutions uh, to. Uh, the main objective of this IPS sales is uh, to work as a link and bridge between the PIC and the institution or university and, and its affiliated colleges also, and then uh, to advise and guide the researchers on the basics of IPS, especially patents with the help of the PIC if necessary, and then uh, to arrange meetings in small groups of faculty members along with officers of PIC for identifying patentable inventions in their respective institutions, and then encourage faculty members or students or researchers to carry out patent searches so that what that they are working on that what uh, areas, uh, what they are doing their uh, this uh, researchers. 
<clears throat> what are the patent table, whether it is patent table or not. So it's very much important to do a patent search. And then before going through to further uh, for the research, and then to facilitate clearance from competent authorities for filing patent applications through PIC. And then finally, uh, they have to forward the cases of uh, IP protection to PIC so that we can forward it to Thai Park and all those things. And so far, we have often uh, four IPS sales in the state, and then three more will be uh, open very shortly. That has been already approved. Uh, these are the list seven. That first one is Manipur University Country Pool, and then National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Nalit Infa, Manipur Institute of Technology, MIT, Country Pool, and then Manipur Technical University, Tagil, Infa. And then uh, this first four has already been open, and these are the, some photographs that our ministers of science and technology and then minister of education and then uh, director type park and then one retired person from uh, <clears throat> uh, in, uh, this uh, patent uh, attorney and then commissioners from education and then science and technology and the VC and directors of the council and then director is also there. And then uh, this Thobal College and then Wakko Manigas College and the Mangal Gandhi College these three will be open very shortly. And then we have a target in to open more numbers of IPS sales in the state. So right now, earlier we are trying to open around four to five per year, but uh, as per the instruction, uh, as I'm told that uh, around 15 per year has to be open in the state. So we will try to cover all the colleges and academic institutions in the state to cover, uh, to open one IPS sale kits in their respective institutions. Then about the association with departments and institutions, we have very good uh, linkages with uh, different uh, line departments of the states and then academy, other institutions also, and then MSME, DI also, we have a good, very good uh, relationship. So far we have organized so many products in association with MSME, DI uh, in, in, in different uh, sectors, especially MSME sectors. And then <clears throat> out of this, uh, uh, this Department of Handloom and Textile has a <clears throat> technical committee for registration of GI. So about PIC also, uh, one of the member of that registration uh, technical committee. And then IBSD, in fact, that is Institute of Bioresources and Sustainable Development. Uh, DBT also, they have also IPS cell. So we also member in that cell. And then MIT, that Municipal Institute of Technology, Kanchi Pool, they have uh, Institute Innovation Council, and then in that council also our uh, PIC is the member of that council. So some so like this we are working on different areas in the state so that we can have uh, some uh, one some uh, IPR ecosystem in the state along with our academy institutions especially and then other innovators, inventors, and SMEs and startups also. So uh, then about regarding the awareness program that we conducted. Every year we observe this World Intellectual Property Day. Uh, this is on April 26. Uh, so <clears throat> it is a some sort. Uh, in short, we can say that it's like this birthday of the WIPO. That is World Intellectual Property Organization. It is a organization of all the, uh, the countries, country members of the world. So, and then other seminars, workshop for students, SMEs, and researchers, faculty members from time to time. Uh, in their respective uh, <clears throat> areas, we contact others, uh, local resource persons, or from other state also, we engage the resource persons and then try to train the, the students, researchers, and then faculty members also. And then uh, very recently, we start a lecture series program at institutions and colleges. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, we visit their respective institutions and give uh, deliberate uh, give deliberation of lectures on IPR and then different issues that we are facing and then what uh, what are the requirements for IP in their uh, respective institutions or something like that. So uh, if uh, any uh, institution or academic institution that are interested, kindly please come forward and then uh, we are ready to uh, to uh, organize this type of program with you. And then we have already published uh, some IPR information in print media also. And then uh, we have done some uh, lecture series in the All India Radio in FAR. And then we visited uh, different exhibitions, melas, organized by different departments of the state and central department. And then uh, share our knowledge about IP and then how to protect their uh, IPs and all those things. So 
we request them to, uh, to pursue for this uh, <coughs> protection of IP. And then we have leaflets and booklets. We distribute them uh, from time to time. And these are the some photographs that we have nice in this. Uh, in the last, uh, so some photographs are here, so different participants and from different sectors. And then, and that's all uh, for the time being. And then I request uh, all the participants from different academic institutions uh, to visit our PIC at least or, or your, your respective IPS sales, uh, what you are doing. Uh, you, if you have any innovation and invention and then please come forward uh, and then just try to discuss with us and uh, we are always ready to help you and then and then finally I request to uh, Citra kindly because you are the, I think you are the only uh, patent agent in the state so kindly to have some information on how to become a patent agent especially in most of the many students are participating to this program so I request Citra once again uh, to share some uh, some information about the patent agent examination, all those things. Once again, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Punjit, uh, for highlighting the IPR activities of EIC Manipur uh, Mastek in a very nice way. Thank you once again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we have uh, Professor C.S. Ibol Maite, Manipur Institute of Management Studies, MIMS, Manipur University, Kanjipur. And he will be uh, giving a presentation on the role of IPR in research, development, and business. Uh, professor C.S. Ibol Maite is a, a professor of management and a director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Skill Development. and industrial experiences. He is a member of Task Force Committee of Education Government of Manipur for implementation of NEP 2020 in Manipur. He was also the director of Manipur Institute of Management Studies for two terms. He earned his MBA from Aligarh University and completed FDP in management from IIM Ahmedabad and uh, obtained PhD degree from Manipur University. He had 12 PhD research scholars completed under his supervision. And uh, he had more than 40 publications in various journals of repute. And uh, he had presented papers and shared sessions in international and the national seminars held at various premier institutions in India and abroad. He is also actively involved in the entrepreneurship development and enterprise creation activities in the state of Manipur. So I invite Professor C. S. Ivalmaite uh, for presentation on the topic role of IPR in research development and business. Dr. C. S. Ivalmaite, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I at outset express uh, my heartful thanks and profound gratitude to all the organizing team for giving me this opportunity. Uh, by the way, uh, all the respected members, uh, could you please hear me? Can you hear me, please? Any one of you, please respond. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me try to share a few slides, which I just would like to share on uh, this occasion. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you see the slides, please? Yes, sir, yes. It okay, okay. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, I'm basically a learner of uh, management. And in fact, we used to keep in touch with many of the 
industrial units and industrial houses or how the business could be established and then for the production of the new items new things uh, new services whatsoever whatever is a productions coming up it can be made commercialized and it can be made available to the public at large so that's why uh, whatever little experiences we have in the uh, business domain and a little bit of uh, research and research and development for the new product development etc we will be just sharing and the role the ipr is playing to make uh, such kind of a things more relevant and some of the things which we are supposed to comprehend especially when india signs the world trade uh, organization and in fact we are to follow the trips trade related intellectual uh, property rights okay yes uh, ladies and gentlemen we are to say to it about building a competitive nation or building a competitive organization wherever we work we are to be very very competitive and today the world is uh, shrinking uh, day by day because of the development in the IT and IT related activities and in fact the whole world is becoming a global village but at the same time even in the business domain too whatever is a business arena maybe in the service maybe in the product and whatsoever we are to face a top competition every part of the world everyone is trying to produce a new product or services so that they can get some customer they can contribute something in the nation building in terms of the economic development so and so forth so that's why we are to situate how the new things could be produced and a whole lot of a new ideas and creative talents be nurtured and their knowledge and their uh, intellectual assets could be protected so that's why here comes the uh, the role of intellectual property rights okay well ladies and gentlemen we know about uh, intellectual property rights i did not do this uh, speak much of it but it definitely gives you an intangible asset to the organization to the uh, institutions the individual or the country at last maybe anything which we are trying to produce related to the original creation of the human intellect so say is the artistic the literary symbol design and the technical and the scientific creations for the commercial use so that is uh, one of course even if it is not a commercial use it can also be protected but normally we see to it uh, in the larger intellect uh, perspective for the patents and all so this is why something which we are to see to it about the production of a new thing but by mere invention of the things of a natural setting which are already available not much of value it is that it is not so that's why we are to see to it what sort of intellectual input we are just providing to the product to the process to any other value addition for soybean Yes, the previous speaker, my friend, had already just uh, spoken a lot about the Manipur, the kind of a role Mastek is doing, and many of the uh, innovative things. And quite a good number of items had been patented, including the geographical indication patenting, etc., uh, registration. So uh, let's have a brief look about the intellectual property, which we can just sit with the patent, the copyrights is another patenting. the trademarks the industrial design geographical indication and also we have a trade secrets and today we are also just having some sort of a specific layout designs uh, for the integrated circuits small small integrated circuits ic chips etc they have a different kind of a layout designs again it can be uh, put under the ipr protection intellectual property rights protection so that is so uh, what we have it generally because all these things are having different dimensions of uh, creating this kind of a intellectual property so patent basically is about the invention innovative products and services but by simply producing as i say any kind of a the uh, uh, a thing newly but not much of value addition which is already available in the natural things this is not an invention okay so that's we are to say to it more inputs of values more certain 
uh, creative things about the human intellect that is needed. And also copyright is used uh, basically uh, for the literary and the artistic works, normally copyrights, okay. And then of course copyrights, we can just register some years, maybe 10 years after that it can be, you know, this one. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the rights, <clears throat> can be of or, or patented or the copyright may be you know this one uh, over then the trademarks trademark is this one we need to keep on updating so some sort of a the insignia the logos designs symbols can also be used for protecting some of the trademarks the product which we produce it can be named it can be some sort of a brands that also we use it the industrial design, obviously, in the layouts for the you know productions, etc. So many designs are there in in the product itself. So that is uh, one creative things about the aerodynamics of the uh, uh, automobile cars or the bikes, etc. We have a different kind of a design. So that's why we need to sit with a different kind of a designing, designing for the uh, houses, designing for the bridges so many other areas of designing so that's why it requires some sort of a creative talents so their knowledge their intellectual property needs to be protected then we have a geographical indication and basically in the geographical indications we are just uh, trying to protect some of the items designs etc especially attached with the location the geographical area then finally, but not the least, we have a trade secrets. So that is a one, everybody is doing some sort of a uh, trade secrets. They normally do not disclose it. It's a very, uh, you know, this one, critical information. They are just having, if at all somebody wants to get it, they should get a license. They should have some sort of a, you know, this one, fees, etc. Only then people Out, uh, you know, tests of KFC, how KFC is different from the others, how McDonald's is making different from the others, how Coca Cola is uh, making their own cocks, etc. They have a different kind of a, you know, this for trade secrets. They normally do not disclose, even if they give franchises, etc. But the trade secret is kept as it is so that uh, people cannot copy it. In fact, in any of the businesses today, we have so much of imitators plethora of imitators so in order to protect that kind of imitations so we need to sit with about the threat secrets so that's why these are the areas or the tools which we take up as an intellectual property rights protection so that's why uh, we can just sit with the rules how it will be using as a role in the resource and the business so in fact this ipr protects the innovative product and services whatever innovative product and services we have it has to be protected so even recently covid 19 pandemic during that time uh, you know people are doing so much of hard work many of the researchers scientists are doing some sort of research and astrogenica you know this uh, you know that has been you know this one working a lot and in fact this pfizer and uh, Oxford University, they just take up the collaborative work and come out this AstraZeneca as a you know, vaccine for the COVID-19 pandemic situation. And similarly, some other companies, they are also just producing of their own, even the USSR, that means uh, USSR is also coming up, their own is Sputnik, and then even India is also making the production. They got a license from this because when they just make it, they are to take the license. So that's why India also, even the Bharat Biotech is also taking some license, the COVID, you know, COVID seal or Covaxin. There are so many things. So that means if we just produce a new molecule, etc., it has to be patented and protected. It protects, it protects through the patenting. And that's why if somebody wants to use it, it has to get the license. So that's why it protects your product and services and especially your works or the trade secrets. Increase the visibility, attractiveness, and value of the product by just having such kind of a uniqueness, protection. Everybody cannot imitate it. That's why it enhances the value and then it gives more attractiveness. 
And also at the same time, it uh, avoids the risks of unknowingly using the ideas or the item by the third party. So that's why it tries to protect your business because any Tom, Dick and Harry cannot just take up these things. So that's why the risks of, you know, this one, uh, a copy by the others can be minimized. Then at the same time, we can also see to it that uh, it can differentiate the business and its product from the competitors. A plethora of competitors are there, how my product can be differentiated. That's why IPR's role is coming up in a big way. That means people cannot imitate. If people can imitate and produce it in the mesh, it will be very difficult to identify who is my product. So that has to be uh, looked into. That's why in short, patent is a powerful business tool. So that's why the role of IPR, especially in the patenting and the trademarks, it is playing a key role in uh, the sustainability and growth of the businesses. So in any of the business arena, maybe in the pharmaceutical, in the mobile phones, in the manufacturing technology, in the processing, whatnot, in any of the business domain, we require some sort of a creative talents. We require some sort of a innovative ideas that needs to be protected. So I will just cite a few examples of how things can be protected. That's why uh, sometimes uh, I hope all the learning members may be quite aware how this one Samsung and Apple is fighting for some sort of a you know designing and also about uh, uh, the IO systems etc. <laughs> Okay, this, uh, sorry, excuse me. So that's just uh, how we just go ahead with the uh, uh, patents. And then there are so much of, you know, this one, interesting stories, uh, how they are trying to protect it, even in the designing, the bajaj, uh, you know, this one, uh, scooters and uh, GBS motors, they had uh, some sort of a, you know, this one, uh, cases, tussles on, and uh, many things have uh, sorted it out. So that's why that can be taken care of through the IPR protection. So that means your genuine ideas, genuine design, creative things can be protected. If somebody copied it, that means your efforts of the scientific research or the huge kind of investment taken off, it may be, it may uh, go in fan. So that's why while uh, India signed the World Trade Organization, India is also a member of WTO. That's why TRIPS comes in. And then from that day onwards, the entire IPR related activities uh, have gone some changes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means uh, even the production of pharmaceutical items, uh, India was having only the process patenting. And today we are to have the product patenting too. Both the process and product are to be patented. Of course, after a certain year, some of the products can be off patented and which can be made available to the pharmacopoeia and other journals. Then uh, if it is, uh, you know, often, you know, this one molecule kind of a thing, then we can copy it. Otherwise, there should be some patenting. That's why many of the uh, pharmaceutical companies in India, just like Dr. Reddy's lab and, and even the, you know, young, you know, this one, uh, pharma companies like uh, Biocons and all, they are just investing huge amount of money in the R&D sectors. Just like even uh, we have seen the Jidas, Kedilas and the Torin Pharmas and so on and so forth. Then some of the multinational pharma companies are also doing the same. So that's uh, keeping in view these things in mind. The one thing is very clear, whatever is a business or the product, service or the item I may be having, as a businessman, we are required to protect these things. So one of them could be the trademarks. It can be registered. So through the trademark or you know things, we have uh, so much of companies, uh, Coca-Cola uh, starting from 1887 onwards, it has been registered. So that's why trademark is, uh, is a sign, the logo, the symbol, or maybe a brand name, a name itself, which identifies the goods and services of one company and from the another. That means we are trying to distinguish the product from the others. They're very important. 
how you have to make yourself differentiated. So for that matter, name is to be given. For that matter, some sort of line is to be given. For that matter, some sort of a logo, insignia, symbol, etc. are to be used. So when we see to it about Nike, so many other brands are also there. We have a Mercedes, we have an Apple, we have McDonald's, uh, we have Toyota, Coca-Cola, Nestle, Puma, but not even we have a KFC and a move like that. There are, this, I'm uh, citing you a few, you know, this one, trademarks, which can be used as a, as a symbol for in the business. So that means these people cannot copy it. This is how we are trying to make our business differentiated. We do not know when we sit with KFC, oh, wow, that's a kind of a, you know, uh, canky uh, fried chicken. So that's why the kind of a chicken stats in KFC is something. So that is what people know it. That means this is how you can enhance the business. This is how you can develop your competitive advantage. This is how you can protect competition from the others as well. So that's why good number of you know this one brands are there that's they used to you know this one register under the trademark either you can put the trademark registration or otherwise not but better to go for the trademarks otherwise some people may uh, register it then there may be some sort of a brand conflict as well so that's why we have lg shoney's reliance the tata godrich by just looking at this kind of a symbol people can distinguish oh this is a good product this is a high quality product etc etc so that's why people may have their own choice people may have their own satisfaction by owning this kind of a product or this kind of a brand name so that's why it's a very very important in the business to strengthen the brand name to strengthen your logo and for that matter you are supposed to use properly the trademark registration so that's why trademark registration definitely will be playing a key role. So many of the youngsters who are interested to join in the business as a startup unit, as an entrepreneur. So the name which we just put it as a brand, we, we should try to sit to it. Normally, we should not put as a generic brand, generic names, okay, generic words cannot be used. A little bit of variation in the spelling or uh, in some sort of a modifications may be needed. Once it is done, then we can. We also have a Ligla in Manipur. We have a Ngamo. We have many other brands. They have already got registration under the trademark license. Okay. So that way you can protect your business. So that's why we must aware quite well how my business can be protected. The kind of a brand, the kind of a logo, the kind of a punchline I'm using through the trademark registration. So that is what we can see it. Even we see it about the products from the Hudson Unilever. A single company is having how many brands they are having. We can see it. Away. Even in the foods brand, you have a Kishan, Annapurna. You can the tree uh, in the tea segment, but Lipton, Taj Mahal, Bruce. Okay. And then all sort of the things, including... Or uh, uh, the various other items so, uh, like red label and uh, uh, various other aspects for the anik, <coughs> uh, that is a key. Similarly, for the personal care, there's the bones, fair and lovely, dolls, beers, these are from, from the soft segment, starting from you can have a lug, sun cell, avians, persona, close up. Then Pepsodan, Life Boy, all these things are different, different brands. So by just uh, looking at it, people can differentiate it. What is the difference between this one, uh, the Life Boy and the dog? That Life Boy is for protection of uh, uh, from the germs, etc., etc. A little bit of economy segment. But somebody uh, who is using dog, okay, or Li Shanxi, that means it is something higher so that's why by keeping the name you can just segregate the kind of a customer group where you are going to serve so that is how uh, this kind of a branding gives you a lot much of benefit in terms of your business protection so the role the ipr is playing in terms of making your business sustainable in terms of making your business growing further from one segment of the market to the another here is an example. Even we sit with about the 
uh, uh, home care brands, home care items. So we see the sub axle and we have a, a, a <coughs> wheel. Wheel and sub axle. Sub axle is considered to be a little bit hair brown. About a wheel, wheel is something lower. So that's you can just segregate these things also. That's why it helps a lot by keeping different brands and different kind of a, a ingredients in it. And this is how we can segregate the market too. So even the Nestle is also having a whole lot of products from the Nescafe, Nesty, Nesty, chocolate, so on and so forth. So, so much of uh, uh, interesting things are there. As we know, we have already joined in the trips. And then today, the, uh, the world over is uh, competing on the knowledge front. So we need to strengthen our knowledge and we need to have proper use of our knowledge as an asset. And for that matter, intellectual property is one way we can engage the intangible assets of the company. And we need to protect it, keeping in view the copyrights, keeping in view the industrial designs about the features, the shape, the surface, and all sorts of things, and also the trade secrets everyone is having. And in fact, even in the software today, it can be protected. But it has a little bit of you know, this one, uh, differences about the patenting and the copyrights because uh, some areas can get uh, uh, patenting of the things, some areas cannot be. Of course, depending on the kind of a patent rules, regulations, the state and the central government is uh, enacted, we need to see to it. But some of the software, mathematical calculations, etc., etc., cannot be patented. But it can be within the copyright or they can have their own uh, mechanism of protecting the things. So that is the one we can just say to it. But anyway, the whole world is now becoming a global village, as I said in the earlier instances, uh, uh, in the earlier things, means we are to see to it in the global perspective. Whatever new things we produce, it, it should be acceptable in the global market. At the same time, we should see to it where do we stand. Whatever the resources we have uh, uh, locally, it can also be uh, you know, looked into and some new things can be come out. So it is highly appreciating for Cooms, etc., who are just doing some sort of pretending and dyes, the organic dyeing and then organic, you know, this one items, even the traditional uh, healing, traditional medicines, wherever the items which we are using, it requires some sort of a patenting. So that's why the kind of a role Mastec is playing to provide the information and the requisite knowledge to uh, do the patenting of such kind of a uh, things is highly appreciable. And I, I definitely love to share these things. At least we have so much of products in the organic front, in, in the traditional healing front, and then wherever possible, let's try to come out in a scientific way and then get it registered in the relevant provision, uh, relevant X or the, you know, this one, schemes, either patents, copyright, trademarks, designed, and also some of the things like the geographical indications registration that is quite appreciating so with that we should have some vision maybe in the next few years on the line the longer terms etc and together we can just think of making more number of patents more number of new things more number of innovative products and if we invent more of the things nothing like that the regions will be growing so that's why while doing some sort of a research uh, you know this one all sort of a things we need to sit with about the IPR. That's why even today we are just taking care of the preservism in the copyrights on various other aspects of the research and we need to just sit with it very well. So that's why for, for the businessmen, especially the young people who wants to enter in the startup and entrepreneurial venture, at least you should make a very clear thinking. That means you should have a good mission, vision, or ambition. That means where do we stand today? Just try to just situate and where shall we want to become tomorrow? 
in the next few years down the line where we sell more. So that's why let's take care on that aspect. And if we have clearly identified the place where we want to move, at least IPR also can be taken up as a tool to help you to reach that destination. And for that matter, uh, I think uh, Mastec definitely will be helping a lot. So that's why intellectual property, keeping our innovative originality of the things is a must for the business to flourish further, to remain for long and of the company. So the concluding remark, which I would love to share is future belongs to the creative and innovative minds who shall be the well creators of the nation. So whatever is a wealth nation will be creating, the main behind is a creative and innovative talents. And we need to nurture them well and for which IPR can play a good role to protect their creative talents and it is very much need of the hour. And I, I just would like to share this kind of a uh, things to all the young minds. At least let's remember IPR is here to protect our innovative talents more. Let's try to engage more in creating new ideas, new things, and we can make more new innovative and uh, invention of certain products or the services that way we may be able to contribute in the uh, economic development of the region that way it will make a vibrant economically vibrant region in the state these are a few things i just would like to share to all the uh, uh, steam participants over here thank you thank you very much for the patient hearing thank you everyone Thank you, Professor C. S. Ibol Maitei, Manipur Institute of Management Studies, Manipur University, Kanjipur, for the very, very uh, elaborate and a nice presentation. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, now we have a next presentation on the topic, IPR is a tool for socioeconomic development in Manipur. And uh, the presentation will be by Mrs. N. Mina, Assistant oh. Professor, Royal Academy of Law. So, uh, I just would like to just intervene. If there will be any interaction session, question no, answer, sir. if any. No, sir. It is only deliberation only. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. I will join for some time. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Please carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mm. So, thank you once again, sir. Uh, now, we have next presentation by Mrs. N. Mina, Assistant Professor, Royal Academy of Law, Oinam, and the topic will be IPR as a tool for socio-economic development in Manipur. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, give you a brief introduction of uh, Mrs. Mina. Mrs. N. Mina obtained her LLB degree from New Law College Pune in the year 2007, very young, uh, young fellow. And, uh, Past Master of Law from University Law College Bangalore in 2009. She also passed PGD IPR from New Law College Pune. She practiced at High Court of Manipur for one year in 2010 and worked as guest lecturer at Santam Babu Prahimphal teaching PBA students during 2011-12. She has been working as assistant professor at Royal Academy of Law of Punam since 2011. And she has been involved in IPR related programs in All India Radio as well as community radios in the state of Manipur. So uh, now I invite Mrs. N. Mina, Assistant Professor Royal Academy of Law Inam, for a presentation on the topic IPR as the tool for socio economic development in Manipur. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the entire core team of the MASTIC, for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to share some of my views today. And I would like to uh, give my gratitude or respect to Oza Ibohal of today's, uh, who has given us so much interesting topic and who has also enlightened us. And I would like to uh, say, give my gratitude to uh, Sir Baite, Madam Chitra, my, uh, the other presenters and the participants. And that today, the topic which is given to me 
this one. I'll just share it. Is it audible or can you yes, share, yes, share yes. it? Is it is it visible, all of you? Yes, okay. visible and audio. Yeah. Is it visible, the slide? The slide is not yet visible. Oh, oh ma'am, uh, the slide is not visible. The slide is not visible. Is it visible now? No, no, not yet. No. Is it visible? Is it visible? No, no, no not yet. No. Sir, let's try to uh, present from our side. Okay. Yeah. Surya, kindly uh, share your. Uh, Surya, please share the presentation of Madam Mina. Please share the latest one which I have sent. Yeah, yeah. Is it visible now? Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Okay, thank you. I think it's, it's yes, here from this side. Yeah. Okay. You can carry on, sir. Yeah, okay. So the topic which is given to me is IPR as a tool for socio-economic development in Manipur. So uh, I have confined my topic within uh, a particular topic, which is GI, because IPR, since it's a very vast topic, and the earlier presenter has also enlightened us by touching all the entire aspect of IPR. So I feel justified in confining within a particular topic, that is GI. So let me just begin with GI. It's a geographical indication. So it, it's also one of the type of intellectual property. So this GI tries to identify a product which has its some uniqueness into it and that product should relate to a particular reason or it should relate to a method of traditional production. And like the other patented product, just as the reputation is concerned, which is associated with the inventor in case of patent. Likewise, in the case of geographical indication also has its own reputation and which is associated with the origin of the product. So let's take an example of Darjeeling tea. Darjeeling tea is associated with the particular area of a, uh, where it is grown in Darjeeling, in the West Bengal. So the reputation is associated with that particular reason where the Darjeeling tea has been grown, not the entire area of Darjeeling. So geographical indication is, is something like that. So therefore, GI is a sign which is used on that product or goods and which also indicate that the particular product is originated from that particular reason. Now, as I said that GI is a sign which is used on the product and that product should have a specific protected geographical indication origin, and it should also possess some qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. See why we like to prefer to have dazzling tea because it has its own specific some uniqueness to it. That is why we wanted to go to have dazzling tea instead of having other tea because the taste which is possessed there the, and the the quality which is involved in it and which is grown in that particular area if you grow the same dazzling tea to your in any other part in any other territorial area you will not find the same taste that is why the reputation 
or the qualities which is involved there that is the reputation and it goes to that particular origin of that product so let me cite some examples here is which we are very familiar to it that is pashmina shawl which is originated from jammu and kashmir we have banarasi sarees from uttar pradesh etc and fanny from goa which is very recent one goa fanny is a liquor product so the intellectual property rights of protected geographical indication have emerged as a significant issue over the recent years in india and that is why the trips agreement in 1995 in its article 22 it has given a way for the enactment of sui generis legislation which is called the protected geographical indication of goods registration and protection act 1999 in order to overcome the hurdles which came into force in september 2003 prior to this act the misuse or the infringement or the piracy which was occurred uh, of this gi product was addressed through the consumer protection act we don't have a specific legislation which specifically specifically deal with the geographical indication so whatever the misuse infringement piracy that was occurred Uh, relating to pertaining to the geographical indication or product was we had to go and file the case before the consumer forum then certification marked or passing of action in court so for that matter we had to go to the court we don't have any specific legislation we don't have any specific provisions wherein that if any of the product has been misleaded then we should get the uh, remedy we should get this kind of remedy we should the the, the misleader should get the penalty where we have to approach nothing was there so simply we have to approach the consumer forum now let me come to the definition <coughs> excuse me so geographical indication it is very much defined under section 2 sub clause e of the gi act 1999 which i have just cited now so as per this act geographical indication is something which is related to the goods means meaning thereby that an indication which identifies such goods okay which and identifies such goods as agricultural product or goods it may be or it may be natural goods or manufactured goods as originating or manufactured in the territory of a country or it may be a region or it may be a locality in that particular territory where a given quality reputation or other characteristic of such goods is essentially attributable to its geographical origin and in a case where uh, such goods are manufactured goods so one of the activities of either the production or or processing or it may be preparation of the goods concerned takes place in such territory goods or locality as the case may be so that means the whatever the goods which has been produced whatever the goods which is manufactured okay it should be related to a particular region geographic region territory or the local area so so if you have manufactured a product it should involve that traditional knowledge in it the traditional method which is involved there with that particular locality or that territory so that is what the definition of gi which is given under section 2 sub clause e of the gi act 1999 so it's all about the goods one side and on other side it's all about the territory or the area or the location where it is grown so the producer one side and the area on the other side and the rational of protecting gi why we the we need to protect this gi geographical indication there's two reason for that one is the protection of consumer interest second is the protection of the producer's interest why we need to protect gi because if if you give the protection then it will help you uh, you know that the it will uh, lead to the 
overall economic prosperity of the producers or manufacturers. Because if you have produced so many products, agricultural products, it may be, or if you, if you have uh, produced so many other uh, horticultural products, whatever the reason may be, but if you have produced it, but if you could not protect it, then again, mis, mis, the question of misleading will come into picture. Because since this is a globalization era, people always look after for the profit making. So the, the first and foremost thing is that the, the product which you are producing and if that product involves that reputation, that is quality in it, if it involves quality in it, if it has specific uniqueness in it, then we should go for the protection. So, so sometimes, and, and on top of that, the, it also helps the consumers because we as a consumer, sometimes we always mislead uh, with the product. And the marketing and the promotion of the product with the GI tags. So if you have a GI tag in it, if you have a GI logo in any particular product, so that helps or that enhances secondary economic activities in that specific reason also, which in turn boosts the regional economic development. So that is why we need to protect GI. So, <coughs> so protection of GI is so much important that the court has given its judgment in various areas. The court has given its, uh, uh, its views in various cases. So geographical indication, like any other intellectual property, is one of the lately discovered, but finally benefited opportunities for the product, which have exceptionally different qualities which it has because of that place of origin or manufacturing. Then again, geographical indications which are governed by the Geographical Indication Act 1999 and the goods falling under the category of GI are given specific sign also and symbols also so that the consumer can easily identify that with this kind of product is manufactured from that particular area. It has involved a particular uh, quality in it. It has its different taste in it. So it is easily uh, identifiable to a consumer. That is why a specific sign or a symbol has been attached to that particular product so that the consumer can be well aware of the quality of the product. With the increasing rate of crime, the intellectual property rights are also not safe as many sellers with the wrong intention of getting profit, they sell the imitated product. Okay, they, is, they sell the imitated products under the false impression of the original product. So uh, here I can cite the example of the uh, Lairum P. Lairum P is yet to be registered. But which uh, it, uh, I think it, is, it happened around to, uh, in the year 2000 where the, uh, this Lairum P was given to the Prime Minister and after he went back to uh, Uttar Pradesh, the Lairum fee was, again, it was misleaded. The people started manufacturing, they started uh, you know, producing the same, uh, this one. The uh, started selling with that imitated product the, under the false impression of the original product. And the poor consumers unknowingly buy those products. So this is one of the cases where the court tries to intervene in it. So, the, the, so there are various instances where the product is a subject matter of a dispute. In certain cases, a manufacturer intentionally adds certain words which belong to the original product and sell them in the market under the wrong impression. But and consumers, we as the consumers always misleaded by this imitated product especially those uh, consumers which are illiterate, what will happen to them? 
because they doesn't know the actual uh, the, which one is original or which one is the not which one is a uh, this one misleded one. So most often they were misleded. That is why in so many cases come up before the court. And these manufacturers, they intend to add those kind of logos, signs to it, just for getting the profit. See, if a Wang Haifi is uh, sold for uh, more than 10,000 bucks, but if you sell the same product, say it costs rupees 2,000, see the difference. So they, that means it is misleading. They use the same sign, they use the same pattern. So in that case, the court tries to intervene and pronounce the, uh, the, the and uh, settle the dispute. So here I'll cite a very famous case, Sports Whiskey Association case. Sports Whiskey Association case. So here a whiskey company was restrained from using the word sport. So the defendant, the other party, have used the word sport in its name and they started selling it in the market. So that was a deception for the consumer because the consumer thinks that, it would, that, okay, this whiskey is a sports whiskey. So they started selling it in the market by using the original uh, name by the defendant, now the case comes before the court because it creates a conf confusion in the minds of the consumer. So now, between the original and the imitated product, so the court restrained the defendant from using such kind of word because it is already get registered, they have GI tag in it. And the same judgment has been pronounced by the Delhi High Court in another case, that is Cartier International BV versus Cartier International 2003. Then Time Incorporated versus Lokis, Srivastav and another in 2005. Then in another case, Microsoft Corporation versus Yogesh Popat and another 2007. So these are some of the cases where the uh, Supreme Court or the High Court has intervened regarding the imitation of the product regarding using the same sign or the logo or the pattern of the original product which is already get registered by GI. In another uh, landmark case, T Board of India versus ITC Limited 2011. So this case was filed in the year 2011. <coughs> T Board of India versus ITC. So in this case, the other party or the opposite party, which is a defendant here, they fraudulently use the word Darjeeling because Darjeeling is a very famous one now because it has its GI take also. So this defendant, the defendant that is ITC Limited, they have used the word Darjeeling for naming one of its premises and mislead the consumers. so that the consumers could believe it, that it was the place of origin, which was not true. So the case, the court held that using this name could pose a great threat to the tea business. So it could pose a great threat to the tea business of that particular place. And therefore the plaintiff move an interlocutory application for granting temporary injunction for using the name. See, the Darjeeling tea, which is grown in the Darjeeling in West Bengal, and the defendant started using the word defendant for naming one of his premises. So that caused a mis uh, that caused a confusion in the minds of the consumer now. That is why the court intervened, because it, go it caused a, a great threat to the tea business of that particular place. So... Temporary injunction was granted. Temporary injunction here, it means the, uh, the court has restrained from using the word dazzling in its premises. In another case, <coughs> sorry, Comet Interprofessional 
do win the champion versus ms chinar agro fruit product 2011 this is again a 2011 case the question involved was the section 22 of the gi act section 22 of the gi act which came into picture where the defendant was restrained here again the defendant was restrained from using the word champagne for the non alcoholic sparkling drink see in the sparkling drink the defendant started using this champagne champagne is again a famous drink liquor product which is already uh, get registered they have gi tech in it so the defendant started using this famous product name just for the profit making the words champagne was registered by the plaintiff under the gi act 1999 so the use of that word again led to the infringement of the plaintiff's rights under section 22 sub clause 3 see the, the the same pain if it was not registered what will happen it could be benefited it is protected because it is registered so it could lead to the infringement of the plaintiff's right under section 22 sub clause 3 that is why the court has restrained from using the word champagne in its sparkling drink this is again a very famous case so in another famous case vikan narawala versus new vikan narawala 2005 case this is again this has come up before the court regarding the uh, similar deceptive for selling the product which is again an infringement of the right of the plaintiff because the producer which is a plaintiff got gi in this product and the defendant was using the same product name so the defendant named the soap agarwal bikanarwala and used to deal in sweets and snacks so this defendant was using the uh, uh, sweets and snack by using the same product name agarwal bikanarwala so it again cause a confusion to the consumer and on the other hand the petitioner was using the word bikanarawala see the same word has been used since 1981 see the, pro the the producer was using the this bikanarawala since 1981 and it get registered in 1992 so the court restrained the defendant from selling advertising any food material under the unit mark because the petitioner has already get registered and has gi tag in its product now the distinction between gi and trademark there are little bit a uh, similarity between the gi and trademark we'll also see how it differs also the earlier presenter has also given a uh, brief about the trademark gi and all but just a, a difference between gi and trademark here trademark is again it's a mark which is given to a particular product so this trademark allow the consumer to identify a goods or services as originating from a particular company so here in the trademark it is always related to a particular company or a particular service provider not to a particular reason unlike gi see so for example i can take lakme lakme is a cosmetic product so it it relates to the lakme company mcdonald then uh, coca cola we have pepsi we have so it all relates with that particular company which is manufactured so this in this in indication gives a fair idea to the consumer about the reputation or a specific quality of a good or services so that is why we as a consumer always prefer we have uh, so on our choices that okay some consumer they will go for pepsi because they feel that pepsi is far better and some consumers they will go for the Uh, Miranda. Some will go for the Coca-Cola. So it depends upon the consumer's choice. They feel that the company 
associated with that particular product. They are they satisfied with that. That is why they they have they will go according to their own choice. So trademark is a mark or a logo which is given to a particular product is always related with a particular company. And in the case of GI, it is again a uh, the the uh, given to a product which is originating from a particular place so the consumers can associate the goods with a particular characteristic or it may be a quality or it may be reputation based on the origin of the product not the company but the origin of the product so a trademark again generally comprises an arbitrary or a fanciful sign which can be licensed to anyone anywhere in the world so the mark the logo the pattern the design whichever is given in that particular mark can be licensed to anyone anywhere in the world but contrastingly the sign denoting a gi usually correspond to the name of the goods which is grown in that particular area or local area or territory or a region so a gi can only be used by person who produces specific goods in that particular area or in the area of origin according to the specified standard then uh, coming to the types of gi we have various types of gi first one is agricultural product we have manufactured product we have handloom product food product so these are some of the types of gi and some of the well known gi or gi tech in manipur we have tamenglong orange which the uh, earlier presenter have also given the uh, explained about this tamenglong orange also got gi tech Wang Kai Fi also got GI Tech, Moirang Fi, the Chai Lemon, Chak Hao, Hatai Chili. So these are some of the GI Tech which has been registered and got GI Tech in Manipur. <clears throat> Now coming to the functions of GI, what all GI is doing? So GI basically fun performs three functions. First one is that they identify the goods. they identify the goods that this that this particular goods is originating from which particular area which particular region territory or a locality so this is the function of gi they try to identify the goods which is, has been originated or from where it is grown and they also suggest the consumers that the goods come from a particular region or territory see the product which is The, with the help of this gi it suggests that to the consumer that the goods come from a particular region here again the wang kai fi or the moirang fi or the safi lang fi so it again gives the consumers the the particular region from where it is produced or where it is manufactured or other characteristic of the goods which is essentially attributable to their geographic reason because the wang kai fi or it may be safi lang fi or moirang fi it has in both so many traditional story in it so that also denotes so that is a function of gi and they also promote the goods of producers of a particular reason also it also promote the goods of the producers of a particular reasons <clears throat> now coming to the socio economic impact of gi we have seen that gi proved to be a significant aspect when it comes to the textile industry so with the changing economic structures of the world the textile industry has also been affected and came into the limelight continuous evolving and expansion of business due to the globalization across the globe has made it necessary for the textile market or the industry 
to protect its indigenous identity and to safeguard from infringers and or for say a uh, false users which are taking advantage of the local and ancient weavers who have been working in maintaining the heritage and rich culture of the indian textile and handloom crafts so being an important sector to flourish the indian economy the textile and handloom industry needs significant protection both in domestic as well as in the international market so why we feel that gi is valuable that why are gi valuable gi is valuable because of the reason that gi are a marketing tool gi are a marketing tool and gi is valuable because of its reputation for quality associated with the place name used on a label advertising gi is again valuable because gi identify the products which are believed to be command higher prices and of particular interest to developing countries also so that is why gi is valuable because it is always associated with the marketing tools the reputations associated with the quality and also the believed identified the product which are believed to be command to for the higher prices etc so we have come, like we have known that what is the function why gi is valuable the types the well known gi we have seen now coming to the protection of gi why we need to protect gi so if you have produced a product today it may take a long years it may take a long time to produce that particular product the idea involved in it the mark the sign the logo it take lot of time you must have not slept the whole night thinking about the pattern the sign the mark because once because that is why we need the protection of gi of that particular product so yeah plants i want to tell you again geographical indications can be protected by way of registration only mm -hmm. if you wanted if you wanted to produce a product okay but you have to get registered so that mm -hmm. it will help mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. infringer mm -hmm. from misleading the product so yeah. registration is the only method where protection uh, gi can be protected so gi act of 99 provides for the registration of a gi and it also confers certain rights on the registered provider so once you have registered with gi today then you will get the certain rights and obligations upon the product which you have produced and provides for the remedies against infringement today your product is infringed by some other fellow then you will get the remedy for that because you have registered your product by registering your product you are you are protecting your product from misleading by the other third party so the act again provides for opposition to the registration also this is a good opportunity the act also provides for opposition to the registration as well as rectification so while you file for the registration it provides for the opposition also as well as rectification correction and amendment of the register so there again they have two part part a and part b so part a contains the particulars of the registered proprietor of the particular gi including the goods for which it was registered and other part a uh, particular prescribed under the rules and the part b of the register will consist of the particulars of the users which is specified under section 6 sub clause 1 and section 7 of the act until and unless your product is not registered your product will get infringed 
it will be produced in the market in overnight your pattern your the 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 shape the mark the logo whatever you have given into it overnight in an overnight it will be copied so it's always better we should go for the registration so gi again enables the entities which have the right to use this exclusive indication of their product and it also helps the uh, producers to take measures against those who use the gi without the permission and get benefited from their established reputation see today the dazzling tea it is registered now it certain rights has been uh, offered by this particular act against the producers from the other third party who has used the same uh, mark or the product name so apart from offering a competitive advantage to a product gi strengthen the brand also and build a goodwill around it and which fetches a premium price as well as increased export opportunity for the product also nowadays what happens is that more consumers they pay attention to the gi origin of the product while buying them gi gives the consumer assurance of a particular quality or the characteristics of the product because it get registered now people are aware now consumers are aware they wanted to have dazzling tea only because they wanted to go for dazzling tea they wanted to go for a, see any, any kind of marriage occasion or festive occasion people wanted to go for wankai fee moirang fee so because it gives the assurance it gives the consumer assurance of that particular quality or the characteristic of the product so they were always look after those kind of product which give assurance which give quality to it and hence gi functions as product differentiators on the basis of quality assurance in the market so it gives a quality assurance in the market to the consumers they get it and it is easily identifiable and it also help the consumer in recognizing and differentiating between the product with the help of this geographical origin oriented traits and those without them so this way gi are known to be a key element in developing a distinct brand identity for quality bound to origin product and help in the growth of a particular business <clears throat> so these are some of the cases i'll just cite only one cases of infringement of gi ikat design of pochampalli ikat designed of pochampalli this is in andhra pradesh is famous for its unique ikat design which became the first indian traditional craft to be registered as a gi in december 2003 so this case was come up in 2003 in which half of the population of pochampalli was dependent on the hand, hand loom <clears throat> so almost after the year the proprietor of gi found that a retailer in hyderabad was selling sarees produced by a mumbai based manufacturer under the false gi of pochampalli which is a very famous design given to it and people are people uh, the population of pochampalli was dependent on on this hand loom product half of the population but almost after the year the proprietor of gi found that a retailer in hyderabad was selling with the same product name mumbai based manufacturer so after filing the complaint the retailer and the manufacturer accepted the case of infringement and agreed to a settlement by giving an undertaking that not to sell any such kind of product in the name of pochampalli in future see if this possibly was registered because of the reason that it is protected likewise when it comes to the in our context manipur context when any kind of the product which is not registered then again uh, then it will be is uh, you will not get such kind of benefit so wankai bhi 
Let's take an example, the same case in, uh, the, in case of Wankai fee or a Moirang fee. If it is sold by some other, uh, say, manufacturer with the same logo, with the same design, then yes, maybe a complaint may be filed against that particular retailer or manufacturers. Definitely, the producer will get the remedy for that because it is registered. Otherwise, such kind of benefit will not be uh, uh, given. Now, what, what about the validity of GI? So today, your product is registered. How long it stays with you? This is a question. See, suppose today your product is registered. It stays for, valid for a period of 10 years. So today your 10 years is expired. What will happen next? Then you have a right to go for renewal after payment of the renewal fees for another period of 10 years. However, if the registered authority fails to get it renewed after 10 years, then the GI gets lapsed and deemed to be GI for a period of two years. See, this is a condition. <clears throat> if the GI authority fails to get it renewed after 10 years, then the GI will get lapsed and deemed to be GI for a period of two years, not 10 years. Also, it is important to get a renewal because the user of GI will not be able to use it after the termination of registration of the registered owner. So this is a, all about the validity of GI. Now your GI is registered, you have enough validity with it. So what all rights and obligations are given to that particular uh, producers or a manufacturers? Once your product is registered, you have got certain rights and obligations under the Act. So GI allows the registration to multiple proprietors and authorized users. It also provides collective right to all the registered entities, like the exclusive right to use the GI in relation to the registered goods. So these are some of the rights. And again, your, when your product is registered, it gives a right to the registered authorities to use a GI by printing on packages. You have a right for printing on packages like letterhead, affixing in goods or product. Putting on the label also, this is another right and watermark to display on electronic and social media platform. So this is your right once your product is registered. Another right could be that non-transferable right in any manner. This non-transferable right may be related to licensing, will, mortgage, place or sell. So once your right is, uh, product is registered, it is non-transferable. You cannot transfer it to anyone. You cannot license it. You cannot give it for will or mortgage, place or sell. But however, they are heritable also, the registered owner and the authorized user warrants that the goods or products are genuine that have acquired GI by proper registration. So these are some of the rights and obligations which is given to the producers once the product is registered. And the last, the conclusion. I would like to conclude by saying that the registered GI tech it prohibits from the holder from using the registered mark of GI or its name in any product which is similar to or misleading the registered product.
dikirim ya gitu ya Hello ma'am, is there any problem? I think there is some problem with uh, Madam Mina. There is some network problem with Madam Mina. So it is almost completed. Uh, his our presentation is almost completed. So um, we are already lagging behind the schedule time. So without wasting any more time, uh, I think it is better to continue with presentation by the uh, so, uh, Sri Baite, Joint Director MSME Development Institute, Tagalpa Industrial State in Fall. Uh, on the in MSME sector. So I invite uh, Sri Yes Baite sir for presentation on the topic IPR in MSME sector. Thank you, Madam Mina. Uh, sorry, uh, there is uh, some problem. So, ah. yeah. So we'll continue with the next present uh, next uh, speaker. Please don't mind. Thank you very much, Madam Mina. Uh, thank you. I think there was a problem with the network. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the problem. So anyway, thank you very much for the uh, very uh, very elaborate presentation, Madam. So uh, we'll continue with uh, the presentation by. T.S. Baite, Joint Director, MSME Development Institute, Tagal Park, on the topic importance of IPR in MSME sector. Dr. Baite, uh, sorry, uh, the Baite, Siri, T.S. Baite, sir, please.
uh, dear participants, uh, uh, we are sorry that uh, Dr. Baite is having some uh, emergency engagement. So we'll take up 